In 1944, Meet Me in St. Louis burst onto the screen in dazzling technicolor. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis, meet me at the fair. Less than 50 years later, this classic MGM musical seemed to be losing its luster. First to notice was New York's Museum of Modern Art. We were doing a major retrospective of Vincent Minnelli when we looked at Meet Me in St. Louis. And we thought that the prints that were available were not quite as richly colored as we remembered. The museum alerted the film's owner, Turner Entertainment, whose vast film library includes all the MGM, RKO, and pre-1950 Warner Brothers movies. Meet Me in St. Louis was a three-strip Technicolor film shot in 1944. The problem with it, it was converted from the Technicolor original on film stocks that were not as good as we have today. The image was contrasty and grainy. It didn't look good. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Together, the museum and Turner agreed to make new copies of the film from the original negatives. However, like family photographs, original negatives often get discarded. This was nearly the fate of Meet Me in St. Louis. It happened in 1975. We got a call from MGM. They had all of these Technicolor negatives and they no longer wanted to store them anymore because the storage costs were, were quite high. And if we were not interested in it, they would probably dump all those negatives into the ocean. The George Eastman House was very interested. And today, the original nitrate negatives of Meet Me in St. Louis and other MGM favorites reside in its climate-controlled film vaults. The preservation of Meet Me in St. Louis now faced an equally serious problem. All theatrical motion pictures made before the year 1950 were on nitrate film base. And uh, nitrate is inherently unstable uh, chemically. It not only is highly flammable and subject to, you know, possibly burning up, it also deteriorates over the passage of time. Nitrate decomposition poses a grave threat to our film heritage. The statistics are alarming. About half of all the motion pictures made in the United States before 1950 no longer exist because they were on fragile nitrate film stock. It is thought that only about 15% of American silent films survive, of all the films made. While nitrate's exact longevity is unpredictable, decomposition is both inevitable and irreversible. In the first stage of nitrate decomposition, the image begins to fade, the image on the film. It becomes brown or yellowish. Then in the second stage, uh, the film actually begins to melt and become sticky. In the third stage, frothy bubbles and foam and molasses-like gooey deposits begin to seep out of the edge of the film. And then in the fourth stage, these deposits become flaky and crumbly and begin to crumble apart. And finally, in the fifth stage, you wind up with nothing but a, a pile of brown powder, no sprocket holes, no image, just a brownish inert powder. The nitrate negatives of Meet Me in St. Louis had fortunately survived. They were sent to YCM labs in Burbank, California, and transferred onto acetate film, a safety stock that replaced nitrate in 1950. Under new stocks and uh, more permanent dyes in the material today, I would say that the uh, length, uh, life expectancy of a negative is certainly going to be well over 100 years. One copy is stored away for posterity in the cool and dry environment of a film vault. Another is used to make new prints for viewing. Compared to the prints previously available, well, there is no comparison. St. Louis, like the rest of the Turner Library, will be around for some time. Of the MGM films, everything is on safety. We've completed all of the features in the Warner Library. The short subjects have not had the same priority. We will get to that as time goes by. The RKO Library, which we acquired later, we are down now to about 100 remaining to convert to safety.
Elsewhere, UCLA, the Museum of Modern Art, and the George Eastman House continue the battle against nitrate decomposition. However, the costs are high. A single color feature averaging between fifty and seventy thousand dollars. And these nonprofit archives are funded only by limited government grants and public donations. Across the country, there's more than a hundred million feet of film on nitrate film stock that will inevitably and with absolute certainty turn to dust unless it's transferred. We are in a race against time, and unless we move quickly, we're going to lose. Despite the high costs and grim statistics, the work goes on. For beyond what's been lost lies what can be saved. And past the idea that movies are merely an hour and a half entertainment lies a much bigger picture. Film is not just Hollywood feature films. Film is newsreels and documentaries and educational films and anthropological films. When people say to me, why are we doing this work? I say, how can we not do this work? For this century, moving images are our distinctive art form. They are the documents of our culture. They are the cultural artifacts that we're going to be passing on. They are our legacy to the future. Bubble.